Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. In this one, we are going to play the Vulture, which is in the southeast, set in 1870. It's considered medium difficulty, and again, it's not a difficult one at all. Actually, it's quite easy. Um, but like any of them, they can be difficult to get a perfect score on. So we're going to set our competitors up to very hard, and let's take a look at the scenario itself. We'll, uh, and if we look at our characters, the gangster is always tempting to me because of the in freight income, and I tend to do a lot of city building. The industrialist, I keep wanting to like him, and I keep experimenting, and I'm sorry, but you just can't build your you can't build your economy fast enough if you try to base it on industry in this game because when you set up the factories, it's fine to have a factory. You can even buy the supply chain and buy the raw materials and what have you and set it up and make some money. But to make the real money, you've got to do several um, upgrades. Well, you do those upgrades, they start costing half a million, a million, and 1.5 million. It's just, it's too slow. It's too expensive. So, Sorry, Roger, uh, you're going to be one for us to do is, is for challenges. I've been able to play, I can play any scenario with Roger and do just fine, but he really isn't as strong as this guy right here. Doc Murphy, the engineer, is awesome because of that. 70% cheaper locomotives and free repair, so you get the, all, all, tons of trains running uh, with good maintenance. The, beautiful. And this one, the lady. The lady is awesome because of that, all those bonuses she gets for passenger mail. And I did some experimenting. I'll show you about those express trains when we get into this one, uh, because this is who we're going to play. We're going to play as the lady. And as I've said, the trickster, the trickster really only gets the 30% cheaper auctions. And while you see such low innovation points, I actually think her research is not that bad because she's going to get many, many spies as long as you have competitors, she would be fine. But once you get rid of the competitors, she's got no research. So the trickster has really been uh, knocked down or nerfed, as they call it. Uh, she is just not strong anymore. The general never was strong, and now he really isn't strong because, you know, that's a, that's a good discount on the track, but you pay more for tunnels and bridges. And how often do you get to build a, a, a meaningful track in this game without a tunnel or a bridge? Uh, the general is kind of puny. Uh, the gangster's okay. The industrialist, I'm afraid, I, I, he's the one I want to like, but I, nope. It's the engineer and the lady. So let's play as the lady on this one. All right, so let's take a look at the objectives and talk about this scenario. We're down in the southeast, and we basically have to really own a bunch of industries. This is all about, it's called vulture because the idea is that after the Civil War, we're going to descend upon the South and come down here and just buy everything we can get our hands on and take advantage of the fact that the South has been beaten up in the war and that, you know, the economy's in trouble, there's a depression on the horizon, and we're going to go out and, on the cheap, get a whole bunch of industries and businesses. So what we have to do first, rebuild the War Savage South, we have to grow three cities. It's not a huge amount of growth, but we really got to keep on it. We've got to quickly grow Memphis in about a year, in, well, exactly, in a year and a half in order to keep our perfect score. We have to do Nashville to 50. Memphis is only 60, but it has to be done quickly. Memphis, we need to get to 50 in um, a year and a half. What did I say? Okay, sorry about that. We have to get Memphis up to 60 in one year. So there's two years total, and to do a perfect score, we need one year. So in this year of 1870, we have to get Memphis up to 60,000. From We have to basically double Memphis in size. Then in a year and a half time total, we have to get Nashville up to 50 from 21. And then we have to take... Jackson in two years and move it from nothing up to 40,000 and it's way down to the south of us So that's fairly challenging city building. So you are yeah, city growth So we definitely want to be on that right away 
Then we have to run a bunch of trains. <laughs> not a problem. Uh, I laugh because that's the way I play. That's not a problem. Um, connecting a bunch of people, we'll be growing these cities. We'll have a network of connected, and you'll see how we can deal with that even more, particularly with the lady. And so running that up to 600000 is not terribly hard. A quarterly profit of $4 million, that's a pretty good quarterly profit. We've got nine, four and a half years to get there, but uh, we won't take any near, we're near that time, but we'll get there. And owning the business is no big deal, uh, really. I mean, you, you have to think about it and take investment opportunities when you can. This is where um, Roger would be very tempting, the industrialist, to uh, uh, you know, have easy purchase of the building, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it that <laughs> basically gives us Roger's benefits without playing Roger. And you have to buy a company. We have to transport a bunch of packages. Again, if we're growing, not a big deal, and buy out all of our competitors. Okay, no big deal. So, so I'm going to restart this and we can because we've let a month and a half slip by while I've talked. So, our 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 um, strategy basically is going to be here. Let's take a quick look at the map. We start here in St. Louis, and we, you notice we've got some uh, leftover track and stuff from the Civil War in four places, so we'll, we'll take advantage of that. Um, and here's the one we have to grow in a year, Memphis. Here's Nashville, we have to grow it to 50,000 in a year and a half, and then in two years we have to grow Jackson up to 40,000. And you can see we've got decent uh, uh, raw materials around us, so it's not, not too bad, but a lot of rivers, you know, this is where I'm saying the general would be crossing a lot of rivers and uh, uh, maybe not getting such a good deal on his track. And so we've got the lady, so what are we going to do? Uh, well, let's just, let's just get in there and I'll show you. All right, so let's get in there and play uh, the vulture on very hard as the lady. So we know we got to build Memphis early. Make sure we hit 60,000 in one year in Memphis. So we got to get right on that, right? Well, not quite. This first idea is something that was submitted uh, as a comment on the channel by Swiss Dreams. So Swiss Dreams, wherever you are, thank you. Here's what we're going to do. Well, this first part's uh, just something I've gotten so I do almost always is delete the original station uh, so that you can place it where you want it. But here, here's Swiss Dreams idea. All right. Well, first of all, we got all this track, <laughs> and we get refunds for taking it out. Look at that, four hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. So we are just going to use the bulldozer and get rid of all this random track that just seems to kind. Of, some of it just seems to just go almost randomly wherever it goes. There we go. Clean all that up. There's another one down here. Look at our money. Look at our money. We're up to three million. We've gained a million dollars. And watch this one. This one's beautiful. Big old tunnel. <laughs> watch this. Boom. There we go. Now, thanks to that, we've deleted all that track that we would have had a hard time trying to make it fit into anything anyway. Now, we've gone up to four million dollars in cash. We started with two. So we've doubled our money. Well, we've got we're out of our cash rich. What are we going to do with it? Well, <laughs> This is Swiss Dream's idea. Hello, Don Lorenzo. We have to buy you. Oh, we just bought him. There we go. We just bought Don Lorenzo. Whoops. And then he moved to the bottom, so we're going to merge with Don Lorenzo. And we're going to liquidate everything. Then we're going to say, who's next? Doc. Thank you for playing, Doc. We will liquidate everything. Who's next? Trisha. Thank you for playing Trisha. So now we went up a little over 4 million. Now we've still got 3.7 million. 3.7 million when we started with two and all of our competition's gone. Now we have an open book. We don't have to worry about uh, you know, double two stations to cut off the competition. We don't have to do anything now but play the game. And the only thing I would say kind of the downer about this is 
we've now turned this uh, nice little scenario into sandbox mode because we've got a lot of money and we've got no competition. So you may or may, you know, if you want to do it like this, enjoy it. And if you don't want to, you know, that's, that I, I can certainly understand. All right. So I, I just noticed something. I haven't thought of this before, but now we've got this nice functionality that tells us where new businesses can be put in. And we could put in a business in Louisville it's got meat. Uh, it's a shame it's got meat. Uh, <clears throat> let's just take a quick look. I hadn't really thought about doing this, but I noticed it over there. We could set up. Uh, we can only go to Taylor. That's as far as we can go. If we could do <clears throat> Taylor or um, whatever. I think what we're going to do is not worry about the... We're, we're just going to get our businesses, with the exception of some of the... Um, rural things like logging and stuff that's so cheap. For now, we're going to take that 3.7 million and turn it into a nice little quick growth opportunity here. So obviously, we got to we've got to start out in uh, St. Louis. So let's get a station in St. Louis, and we're going to use a station with signaling control, just because they're easier to deal with, and we got money, and why not? So let's put a station in St. Louis, and one in Memphis. And we're going to run a city-to-city -city line between St. Louis and Memphis. Remember, we're the lady, so we want a lot of passenger revenue, right? Well, how are we going to do that? Well, <laughs> uh, this is the interesting thing. And, we, and, and of course, we want a lot of... Um, uh, and I want to show you how cheaply you can get that line if you just scoot that over like so. 149 to make that whole line. That's nice. Okay, so... Um, we want passenger uh, revenue, right? Well, the f <laughs> here's the thing, and we'll we'll see examples of it later. I can absolutely get express lines and still run freight. Absolutely can, and that that's where the lady goes nuts because now with her double bonus on her express lines, you know, when you got these mixed mixed uh, stuff, you can still make great money on automatic lines. And of course, we need to build. Uh, do some city building here with um, Memphis so we want to get that meat going to Memphis as fast as we can so that just cries for an automatic line we'll set one going back the other way and it's a pretty let's run four trains total on automatic so now we've got meat going to Memphis and we've got beer being made in Memphis. And in a moment, we'll make sure that we have a steady supply of both of those things. But, but now let's go out here and hook in Nashville because we've got to get it going too. And the nice thing about these automatic lines is that, <clears throat> pardon me, they can handle uh, a couple of, of busy city to city line, no problem, plus some other stuff. They're just, they're uh, very, very efficient because of, you don't get the delays, people stacking up all, everybody trying to use the same lane. And, and of course, they're just easier to set up. You don't have to think as much. And that, that's good or bad. I, you can decide whether you like that or don't like it, but it certainly is easier. And, and what I mean by that is, and this is for those of you who haven't played very much, because of this, well, maybe, maybe you can see it better like this, because they've already got these switches built in, and this little house here, which is where folks would go work, and they would watch the trains, and they would si assign them to a station. And because we've got that automated signaling going on here, then trains will come in and and automatically use whichever lane is open and that's a lot more efficient than having say we've got them all set up to go in and maybe they're all going to one and then two trains that both happen to be going to one even if we balanced it out if two trains that happen to be going to one come in behind each other they're going to queue up and wait this way you can use both tracks as much as possible so they are definitely more more efficient there's no doubt about that so um 
Let's set up four trains running between Nashville and Memphis. And the other advantage to that is that will also give us um, more meat, should we need it, coming out of Nashville. Okay, so now we have Nashville to uh, Memphis. Now the other one we need is way down here in Jackson. <clears throat> and we want to get started on it as quickly as we can as well. So what I think we're going to do here is set it up so that we can have all these cities talking to one another. Let's do that. Let's just set it up like a little mini four-city cluster. Now, the reason I say a mini four-city cluster is we'll have all the... Um, cities able to send goods and passengers back and forth and between each other. However, we're not going to worry. We will never get to the point where we actually get to build out a full-blown full city cluster because uh, we only have to get to 60 at Memphis, 50 in Nashville, 40 uh, Jackson. We'll go ahead and do everything else, and I, I have a feeling we're going to be done way too soon to worry about, you know, <laughs> a true four city cluster. But we can still set it up. It's easy to set one up that will. Uh, behave like one. So let's run a station. Oops. Now it's a beer city, so we would like to see some meat start going down there. But the first thing we'll do is take the easy hookup, which will be to um, Memphis. And keep in mind, we also have a goal to ship uh, uh, 10,000 packages in this scenario and so there's nothing wrong with having a nice line that's running a lot of passengers and mail and remember also <laughs> we're playing as the lady so those those lines can become express lines for us very easily and make a lot of money and you see me putting these supply towers kind of Toward the ends, uh, I'm anticipating that I'm going to bring good, out, you know, uh, raw materials in there, and want to be able to pick up supply towers easily. And we'll see how that works out. This one we could even set. I tell you what, we're just going to leave it on automatic uh, because I have something else in mind for, uh, like, how we would update the trains and all that good stuff. I have uh, something else kind of up my sleeve, if you will for how we're going to try to get as many express trains as we can, as cheaply as we can. And we'll see, we'll see that in a little bit. Let's let them spread out a little bit. Now, the only thing I would say, like this line here, if we make it passenger mail only, no, no, I'm not going to. We could, and then set the cars, uh, you know, put it, put in the special cars to get more money out of them, passenger mail and all that kind of stuff, but we won't, we won't go there just yet. All right, so let's, if we build a little bypass around Memphis like so, That's going to open up a line from Nashville to Jackson. And that's why I didn't make those, that other one passenger mail only because I knew we were going to run. I wanted to keep using that track. So no point making a passenger mail only and then having a bunch of freight trains running on it. So we're going to handle the express lines a, a kind of a different way. So let's run six trains on that. That's a long line.
That's three and four. We'll let them spread out a little bit. And five and six. Okay, now we need to watch our traffic. We do not want any traffic jams here. 102% is 50-50. That's probably enough for that station. This station, 104. Okay, okay, good, good. We're getting good loads on these stations. 90 is good enough. So uh, let's see what we need. All right. Memphis is hooked up to everybody. St. and... Nashville's hooked up to two of them, Jackson to two, so we need St. Louis to, oh, well, first of all, right now what I want to do is make sure, remember, we've got to grow Memphis, we can't have any lags, so I want to make sure that Memphis is getting its meat supply, so we're going to deal with that first. By the way, while I'm doing this, <laughs> now I'm thinking of it. I have experienced there is a really dirty little trick you can also do. When, when I started, and when we start, and you buy out the uh, com competitors, don't buy them just right off the bat. Start an auction on um, the meat industry in St. Louis, for example. Now, the AI com competitors won't typically try to overbid you on rural stations like a cattle ranch or a logging or something, but they will go after those city industries. And what you can do is start an auction, and then as soon as somebody bids on it, just walk off and start another auction. You could actually uh, start an auction, have the competitors buy, let's say, the main industry in these four cities, and then buy the competitors, and guess who owns those four um, industries? <laughs> you do. But that slows things down a little bit. It takes a while for all the auctions to finish. You, you lose some days. It's not a big deal, but, um, whoops. And here we do want, stop that. We do want to run a refrigerator car. For what? Here we go. Apparently the, the cattle slaughtered and then sent into uh, the city. Now, here we go. Here's where we, here's the, what we're going to do. I don't want that. I don't want the decapod. And you may be saying, oh my word, <laughs> he's an idiot. He's, he, he's turning down a perfectly good uh, train. Yep. I want the bald one to be the fastest thing available because it's the cheapest thing available. I can run a lot of them. And um, I can get express status with it because I don't have any competitors who are raising up the research. So there's, I know nobody's running the Decapod. So I know the fastest train out there is the um, ball one. And to get a, a, an express line, what you need is um, uh, be running the fastest train available per the research tree at that point in time and set a record on that run. That's, uh, those are the rules, and uh, we can do that. We can do that with automatic lines. We can do that with our little ball ones. So we're just going to keep running ball ones for a long time, and then later on we'll turn things up uh, when we get the opportunity. So where was I? Oh, yeah. We want to run Nashville to... Um, oh, wait a minute. We've got our meat. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We want our wheat. And then let's see. How much is this one going to cost? 150, yeah, we'll take that. For 150, we'll take an industry. And we're going to run a train directly into Memphis to make sure that that um, Sorry, uh, talking and playing aren't always my best thing. 
to make sure that the uh, the uh, beer industry in Memphis is always supplied right now primarily to make sure Memphis grows but it'll have the the effect of helping us to grow our entire little network here ah. And one one thing I love about this game, as far as replayability, if, if I were to, if I played this map and tried to do the exact same strategy again, there's a very good chance that I would build significant parts of the uh, uh, of the build, a significant track lane, for example, a different way, like like this one right here. You know, I could have just as easily gone uh, out over here straight across and hooked in here and then you could say well that's really useful because now you can come into memphis and you could even go to st louis or whatever i mean there, there's lots of options i mean there, you could you could do everything a different way every time now we got a lot of traffic right here so we want to make sure that there's no stop please we want to make sure there's no place here where we're going to get a train we could have delays because of that um, that tower. It's tempting to have that tower there and have it hit all those tracks, but at the same time, it could very easily mess us up. So I'd like to get rid of that tower. And I'd like to find a time when nobody's using it. And now I got the tower is gone, and those trains that we're using it have just been reset. So instead of having them disappear or having to get rid of them, they have gone back to back from whence they came, so to speak. So if we put a tower back here where it won't bother anybody, that'll pick up all those lines except this one. If we give them their own tower, now we've cleaned up a potential. That, that area right there is still getting a lot of business, but at least now it's not going to uh, mess us up. And what we wa actually want, you know what? <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I've actually decided, I, I forgot what I was doing there. Really want to run um, that wheat in, into another station. We are going to run it directly in. We're not going to run it into a warehouse. I like to have wheat going directly to the beer, and I like uh, cattle going directly to the... Uh, Sorry, directly to the uh, um, meat industries. But I forgot we we're actually going to, we're setting up a new um, guy here. And we could actually set it up where one tower, <laughs> one tower here could serve everybody if we do it. And I don't really care about that kind of being extra long track because once it gets a couple of runs in the trains are actually going to be waiting to go anyway and of course I've got it on the wrong running the wrong track of course you know what I take it all back I don't like any of this <laughs> don't be afraid to change because we're going to run this into a new station we're going to rethink how we're loading this up we're going to go through this little gap like so and then into our new station wow that's <laughs> that's way better
Okay, we don't want the decapod. We do want, we want anything that's going to help us. Well, let's see. Blackmail, I don't play, pay blackmail. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see, how we do it? We've got, um, So we should have wheat going in and a constant supply for the beer. We've got cattle going in and constant supply for the meat. So we get consistent supply of meat going into Memphis. We see here we've got a new industry, a um, textile industry. And so we can easily make sure that that textile is pumping textiles into Memphis. We're going to buy that cotton farm, although it's not a great deal. And run cotton into, let's just see here. Yeah, we can run it directly in to that uh, original station we built because it's only at 50% right now. A little bridge there we don't need, so let's clean this up. Okay, so now we should be able to make a profit on that business and run, keep the uh, textiles going, which will also help Memphis grow. We've got our cattle, we've got our beer. All right, all right. Uh, let's see, we want to make sure that we're getting cattle to Nashville so that Nashville can send uh, meat to Jackson. Uh, and we also want to have Oh yes, well, these, the, I said four city cluster and I'm going to back off that because it's so much easier to think of this as a two city cluster, which has a little, a couple of addendums for Memphis, a two city cluster, St. Louis and Memphis will grow one another and Nashville and Jackson will grow one another. So um, I'm going to back off what I said. I'm going to put in another station, even though we don't necessarily need it yet. Going to, going to have two here. We're going to put in another regular station with signaling control. Then we're going to hook in this cattle if we can get a, I think it'll be expensive. Yeah, forget it. It's a level two. We're not going to mess with that. Pardon me, we want our security guards on these short uh, f freight lines where they're going to be getting, giving us that uh, price bonus a lot. 
So now, what else do we need to do? We've got beer and meat. We're going to have textiles coming into Memphis. It's really in pretty good shape. Do we have to do anything with raw materials? Oh, 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 here's what we can do for sure. We can put a tailor in Memphis, and that tailor will be supplied by the uh, cloth in St. Louis, and now we've got another industry, another, see that, that's going to start getting textiles, and beautiful, so our tailor so we got another industry, it'll make money, and it's going to make clothing. And what we can also do, I think, did I see a slot out here? This is going to hit 40000 very, very shortly. And the next thing up, really, is going to be another textile. And we wouldn't mind having textiles that could run down to Jackson anyway. So what we're going to do is make a little preemptive strike. We're going to buy that cotton while it's cheap and our plan is going to be when this hits 40 to put a textile in here and even if we miss it that's probably what will get built because that's the next uh, um, I don't know it might mess us up and build one of those things uh, Taylor uh, we'll see we'll try to watch it I'll try to do a good job and watch it now we've got to make sure that Jackson is going to grow for us so Here's the interesting thing about this. See this field right here? That's actually a wheat field. If you look at our flow of goods, and we look at wheat, see there's there's wheat uh, right here. There's wheat. And this one down, I said I messed that up. This one's wheat, and I think that one's this one down here. Cotton. That one's cotton. <clears throat> but if you look at them, they, they don't have any symbols yet. So if we click the farm, this factory won't resume production until the city of Jackson has more than 20,000 inhabitants. In other words, the farm is kind of shut down because there's no market for it. So we've got to grow Jackson up to 20, and when that happens, these two uh, will will pop for us. And we can't even, I wish we could buy them now while they're dirt cheap, but we can't. So if we want to, we could do, we could fairly easily run wheat down to Jackson and make sure that its beer is getting supplied, which is probably, honestly, it's probably the right thing to do right now. I think when you do these, you just want to think about what is the single right thing to do at this moment. And I feel like it's getting the wheat down to Jackson is the, is the thing. Now we have two options. We could run a line like this and run it through Memphis or build a little bypass around Memphis, or we could just run it out this way. I think I'm going to be inclined to just run it out the way we originally started to build that track for the for the wheat. Well, let's just do that. Let's just put in its own station. Remember, we own that wheat, so that's that we're just creating. Uh, our own pop profit possibility, so that's a good thing. Hook up and catch those supplies on the way out. So that was a relatively inexpensive investment, and we can run some trains down to Jackson. And we're going to need to, <clears throat> pardon me, we're going to need to bump up the production in this in this farm for sure. And yeah, once once that wheat gets down there, it'll have wheat and it'll have beer and it'll start growing. So we'll be in great shape there. Memphis is still growing. 
nicely and it's already over 50,000. So we're looking good. Although look at this, we're already into September. So this, uh, you've got to really make sure that Memphis keeps growing to the point where we might want to anticipate what it needs next, just to be certain. It's getting some milk overland. Is it getting corn? It's getting a little bit of corn overland. I say milk and corn because they're both right here. Now let's just run corn into both of them, into a couple of them. Can we uh, buy that? Mm, that's pretty expensive. Now let's just try running one train. I think we'll just run a train, like so. And when you come back from Memphis, be empty. And it's going to sh just shut it. And when you come back from Nashville, be empty. The reason we're making it empty is so it won't be hauling, uh, stu you know, passengers or mail or whatever. So we'll be complete. Oh, we got our 10,000 packages already. That wasn't terribly hard. I lost my whole line. Three, four, like that. Come out of Memphis, empty. Come out of Nashville, empty, so that you're not picking up goods or, or people or mail in those uh, cities. You're coming back and hauling corn. We want you to haul corn. So we can just run a train like that. We could run a couple of couple of trains, and they'll just bounce back and forth. In fact, this one we could even change it and make it uh, like that. There we go. All right. So we got some corn being delivered. We've got uh, Memphis growing, continues to grow. Uh, how are we looking? Looking pretty good. We're getting growth in Nashville. What about Jackson? Remember, we haven't even taken out a bond yet. This is amazing. We haven't even taken out a bond. All right, we're still waiting on that uh, wheat to get down to um, Jackson. Oh, it's there now. So let's see what happens here in Jackson. Now that it has wheat and it's going to start having beer, it should be very, very happy at this point. There we go. Now we're starting to get growth in Jackson. All right, good deal. And we could even run a train... And I won't set it to run full. I'll just say, go down there to Jackson and come back from, well, it won't be a problem. Come back from Jackson empty and just uh, take some corn to Jackson. All right, good deal. 
Uh, let's see, where are we? Now, we look like we're in good shape for Memphis. Fifty, eighty-seven percent demand satisfaction. Yes, we're in good shape for Memphis. Now we need to set up. Um, <clears throat> we've got Jackson set up on this uh, kind of uh, deal with um, Nashville. Oh, we want to watch Nashville. Right, that's right. Oh, good, good, good. All right. So Nashville, we want to put a weaving industry in Nashville. Hooray! Now we want to start making money on our cotton uh, investment over here. I think I'd like to run it in on this uh, over here. Pick up this supply tower. Uh, Probably one train is probably enough. But just to be certain, we'll run two. Okay, so now we've got uh, profitable industry here feeding textiles. It can feed textiles to Jackson and to Memphis. Okay, now we're looking good. And this business will start making some money. And the uh, cotton will make money. And our wheat will make money. And life is good. And we've got a fruit... <laughs> a fruit connection bonus. We'd like to, <laughs> so, <laughs> so this fruit, really where it could be used right away is, is Memphis. And, <laughs> of course, that means it would have been better if we had this line running that way rather than that line over there. But uh, we'll make it work somehow. And if I was more into how things looked and how the setup was and all that stuff, I would probably blow some of this up and rebuild it with one large station and or whatever, but uh, we, we won't do that, of course. I think, I think what we'll do is just run it across and hook it into this line. There we go. We can run a couple of them. So it's uh, it's probably worth noting now. now Right here, it, this was a difficult cross to make it come back because this uh, station is so close. So what, what we're doing here is coming in and tying it off in front so trains can go out 
across this and this is a two-way and then they can come back and actually stack up right in here so they won't interfere with this line coming out hopefully that made sense to you and we completed a task what did we complete oh we've got 40 trains running now memphis is at 59 and growing and we're in november so we're in great shape but you can see how to get a perfect score on this you've got to have memphis growing pretty quickly and it's got to just keep growing it cannot slow down at all how are we doing in nashville uh-oh, Nashville is not growing. That's got to be fixed. They're not getting wheat, logs. We can give them extra stuff, logs, and uh, they're probably getting milk. Let's let's do. Let's see if we can't run the same deal we did with the logs. Let's buy this. Let's put in one small station. This is just an experiment. Let's just see how this works. Instead of running full, going to have it run. So just grab whatever's there that they need and take off. In this case, a full load. And now we can run one to um, we go over here and hook up. can say grab what you can and run over to uh, and finally finally in November of our first year we're going to go into debt it's about time and look at the size of the of the bonds we can open up and what completed ah we've Memphis has hit all right good deal look at that that, that was fairly close we didn't have any promoters to use so uh, that was pretty close all right, so this is a good place to wrap up this episode. We have grown Memphis to 60000 in a year, and we've set up a really good overall infrastructure to uh, have a strong economy and to grow Nashville and to grow Jackson as we have to do per our tasks, and we will take up with that in part two. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.